This week we will be doing solution calorimetry, sometimes called coffee cup calorimetry, where we are using a double stacked coffee cup um, to hold a solution for a reaction and determining the temperature change within the coffee cup. However, we want to make sure that we account for the amount of energy that is absorbed not only by the water as part of the solution, but also by the calorimeter itself. So the first part of our experiment is going to take into account the heat capacity of the calorimeter by using a process of known energy exchange. Throughout the experiment, you'll be using the difference in mass between the calorimeter when full and the calorimeter empty to determine the mass of the solutions. So you need to make sure you have the mass of the calorimeter at the beginning. Be sure to include the mass of the thermometer in the mass of the calorimeter so that you can include this each time you do the measurement later. Begin by measuring 100 milliliters of deionized water into a clean beaker and putting it on a hot plate. To be effective, the hot water needs to be above 60 or 70 degrees Celsius, but not boiling. While this is heating, prepare the rest of the first part of the lab. Pour 100 milliliters of room temperature deionized water into your calorimeter. Then you will need to measure the temperature of the water in the calorimeter. Be sure to let it sit in the calorimeter for a couple of minutes to be sure that it has, it has equilibrated. After the temperature on your hot water bath has become greater than 60 degrees, you can remove it from the hot plate swirl it a little bit so that the molecules are all mixing around and then you're going to let it sit. Make sure you put it on one of the glass squares so we don't damage the table and you're going to let it sit for a couple of minutes. It will start to cool a little bit but the temperature will also become more uniform. You can stir it gently with a stirring rod. Don't use the thermometer to stir. Once you have recorded the temperature of your hot water you're going to pour the hot water into the cold water and immediately replace the lid. Insert the thermometer and begin watching the temperature. We are looking for the highest point that the temperature reaches. This may take up to a minute, so make sure that you continue watching until the temperature starts to fall. Be sure that while you are mixing your solutions, you do so by gently swirling the cups and not by stirring with the thermometer. In the styrofoam cup, you can poke holes and that can make the styrofoam cup so we can't use them as our calorimeters. Once again, take the mass of the calorimeter and its contents. The difference between this mass and the last mass is the mass of your hot water. For part two, begin by measuring 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid into your clean, dry calorimeter and taking its mass. After your thermometer has, a ch has had a chance to equilibrate with the hydrochloric acid that is in your cup, record the temperature. Because the hydrochloric acid and the sodium hydroxide have both been sitting in the same location, we're going to assume that this is also the initial temperature for the sodium hydroxide. You will need to also measure 100 milliliters of the three molar sodium hydroxide. Remember that the last thing that you measured in your graduated cylinder was the hydrochloric acid, and it will react with the sodium hydroxide to produce heat. So we need to make sure that we rinse out the graduated cylinder before we use the sodium hydroxide. Best practice is to rinse first with deionized water and then take a small amount, just a few milliliters of sodium hydroxide, rinse with that as well, and then fill. As with the first part of the lab, we're going to pour in the sodium hydroxide and then immediately add the lid and the thermometer so that we can see the temperature changes from the beginning. Continue to watch the thermometer until the temperature either levels off or has reached a peak and has started to drift downward. Once again, take the mass of the calorimeter with its thermometer and lid and the complete solution. 
The difference between this mass and the last mass is the mass of your sodium hydroxide. Now you're ready for some calculations. Think about the reaction for this lab. We have hydrochloric acid and a base, sodium hydroxide, that are mixing together. This indicates we were doing a neutralization reaction, so the product should be water and a salt. A salt can be any ionic compound, but in this case it is the familiar sodium chloride. What does this tell you about what you can do with the contents of the cup after the reaction is complete? 